when the uh, light of God is upon your life, people will not be able to stand um, bringing rubbish to you. Today, I'm the deputy leader of the legislative house, and well, the only reason that they didn't make me the leader was because of my age and because of experience and all. There are many aspects of you. You are a pastor. You are a politician. Mm -mm. Also I'm a, a Christian in politics. Okay. Not a politician. You are a Christian in politics. Yes. You are a Christian in politics. And you are also very big on social media. <sighs> or growing. Okay. Better. <laughs> <laughs> on social media. So why did you go into politics? Okay. Um, why did I go into politics? Uh, it's... What is... It started about four years ago um, when my father and the Lord as Pastor Iadibwe made a statement that um, the house is going to build a is going to build an auditorium the size of Ibadan. And now the biggest auditorium we have on Redemption Camp is three kilometer by three kilometer. That I can't even I can't even if I'm doing exercise or anything, I can't even walk the length and breadth of. And when he said it, people were just like, how would you build an auditorium the size of Ibadan? And that's 60 kilometers by 60 kilometers. And there was, there, was, there was a day I was just doing my normal prayer work on the redemption camp, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, um, this auditorium that Adibui, my son, says he is going to build, that he cannot do it alone. Everyone needs to be part of it. And I said, oh God, how? And God said, there is no land within the redemption camp that is the size of Ibadan. And if anybody is going to sell, sell you that magnitude of land, it's going to be the government. And God opened my eyes to see that, okay, from Bega, that Ike, the end of Ikeja on the express, down to the redemption camp is 42 kilometers. And so if you are looking at 60 kilometers, that's towards the Shagamu interchange all the way down to Ogewe, length and breadth. Nobody, no family is going to sell you. Nobody has such land, except the government. And that's where it started from that. Okay, which means we need to get people into government to actually um, realize some of the things that God has promised us. And just like the Bible says in Psalm 117, that I delight in your prosperity for the sake of my house, for the sake of the Lord's house. So I had no experience in politics. I just called. Um, one of my bosses, that's Pastor Dari of Blessed Memory, is going to be with the Lord now. And he said, oh, Pastor Dari, this is what God is saying, this is what. And he was like, okay, cool. So how do you go about it? I said, I'm, ask, I'm asking you. And he said, okay, let's go and pray about it. Not too long, we had answers. And when answers came, answers was very amazing because I was like, I was one of the guys that was really pushing, like, answers, answers mm -hmm. on Twitter, everywhere. And um, as at the Sunday of that week, I remember, uh, no, Saturday, people were, Pastor Samadiemi said something, and people were like, oh, the Pastor Adiemi Church will go tomorrow, and all of that. And the speaker just said, okay, if people are, if people are doing Pastor Samadiemi and they want to bring a screen to um, Lekki, that was going to happen on the mainland. We were based on the mainland. So I said, okay. So I called a few of my friends, Aroli, um, Bamileri. I just I called a few, few of them. I said, can we have a church service in Ikeja? And they said, fine. I will need a flyer. We had a church service in Ikeja. Alawusa. That ends as um, so, uh, Sunday. So it was called protest service. So it was so nice. Uh, Mommy Gio, that's Pastor Mrs. Folo Adibo even sent us puff puff and drinks mm. um, all the way from Redemption Camp. Uh, we had a whole lot of people come around. So it was so nice because we had people that came to protest as usual and all. So we had our own setup on one side, people praising God, sharing the word. Uh, Pastor Kulia Jai came, we did an altar call and all sorts happened. And after that, um, the next Sunday I was going to preach in church about um, the next phase for our nation. And I remember I was preaching from Proverbs 22, and it was as if I was preaching to myself. 
Then the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the Holy Spirit led me to the part of Proverbs 22 that says, "If the righteous are empowered, people rejoice." And um, the, the ESV version talks about the fact that the people do not suffer if good people are in power. So that was like a confirmation for me. So I just started. I just went to. It was like the, everything was. Speaking yeah, everything to you. was just like coming back to back, and wow. really, I had to go and look for the party that was. Why like making sense. Sorry. Because in Ogun State, as at today, if you are serious about anything, except you want to, except you want to waste your time and you just want to be there on social media and contested for election, if you would want to um, uh, make a mark quickly, and if you are serious about what you are doing, you have to, you have to join the ruling party. Mm -hmm. There are some places where you have other states of the federation where you have. Uh, but uh, multiple parties running things, but there are um, places where you have the single party, so I, you can't go and join an opposition that doesn't have a structure or a system. And now the 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 so politics. It was a strategic choice for you. Yes, yes. It wasn't. It was a strategic strategic choice. Yes. Now the inter party politics for uh, places like uh, Ogun State, where you have. Um, one party dominating more is even more than when you get to the election, because when I contested for primaries, or when I was contesting for the, during the primaries, we were about 21 that were contested. All of these guys were more experienced. They are hardcore politicians. They have been in politics. They have like the party leaders know them. Some of them are even coming back for re-election, and and I was just a novice, just this young boy, under 30, like coming from nowhere. The only, the only thing I had on my CV was is from RCCG. That was the only thing, and it was I, it, there was no hope. Everybody told me that guy, you are not going anywhere. Don't waste your time. Don't do this. And for the fact that many of them knew that I was like one of the forefront guys on NSAS and all, they're like, oh, no, no, you, you are anti government. You are. So when I went back to God and God said, I'm going to send you. There's no, there's no point in getting scared. And things started off unfolding. God started making his way and all of that. I remember there was a day one of our leaders called me and said, Oh, Diola, um, I don't know what you are doing, but whatever you are doing, make sure you are you continue. Like he said, make sure you continue whatever you are doing because the places where I'm hearing your name, I'm I'm even I'm even bothered because uh, my I've not gotten to this um, height in my political career and mm -hmm. all of that. So and it, everything was just God. Everything was God and hard work because that time was was really really crazy. And for me, what I, kind of hard work? Ah, hard work in the sense that okay, for my for instance, my the word that I cover, my constituency, it's it's like from here. I'm talking about distance now, it's from here to Lakwe. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's unlike Lagos where. You have 10 streets, 20 streets a ward in Ogun State. It's not like that. You have just 20 local governments, and you have, you have areas that are highly populated. And so you have to get to every local community of the area to tell them about your uh, ambition, your plans. And you know, in the party as well, they have different. They have all their car courses, mm -hmm. their factions, and all of that. So you have to go and meet this one. And the sweet thing was, I was not coming from any faction, so I was more like a unifier. Okay, this guy is nobody knows him. Okay, sorry, I have a question. So, in politics, everybody knows how we do politics in Nigeria. We've heard the stories of the um, of the um, delegates, right? the things you have to do, the quote-unquote dirty things that you have to do to get power in this country. And to be honest, not just Nigeria, all over the world. How do you as a believer navigate that? Okay. Um, for me, the first thing is, uh, when I was going into politics, all of these things are not alien to me. But uh, I was not going on my own. God sent me. So even when... Things were not looking like it. God kept on telling me, guy, I sent you. And um, for every step I take, for everything I do, wherever I'm going to see, I ask God for permission. And 
everybody knew that this guy is a believer. This guy is a pastor. So it was, it was difficult for anybody to ask me for a bribe. Even we'll get to some places, some meetings where uh, probably they are drinking and like, ah, he's a pastor, he doesn't drink. Or... Don't you think that it's hard for people to believe that as a... Oh, uh, well, like, it's... Yeah. And maybe that's what is preventing people from politics. No. Because like you said, God said at the beginning, as when he was speaking to you, that these prophecies are not just going to happen on their own. Yeah. We all have to... The thing, about, the thing about politics in Nigeria is uh, many of us have not gone in to see what is there. It's easy for me to stand outside this building and say, this building looks like somewhere kidnappers use. But if I don't go into it, I won't know whether kidnappers use the building or maybe it's a church or it's a shrine or whatever. Many people just stand outside and say it's dirty. It is, it is dirty. There's not, even in the church, we have dirty politics in the church as well. In our secular life, in our workplace, even in HR, they teach you HR politics and all of these things. These things are there, naturally. But when you get in, it is easy for you as a child of God, that has a mandate. And for us young people, the Bible tells us something in Job, Job chapter 32 or, or so, it says, In the days of my youth, when the candle of the Lord was upon my head, and what does it mean? That means the light of God was upon my head in the days of my youth. He said, Then the eighth, the eighth verse then says that when all the old men saw me, they covered their faces, and when all the young men saw me, they ran. It means that when the uh, light of God is upon your life, people will not be able to stand um, bringing rubbish to you. Today, I'm the deputy leader of the legislative house, and well, the only reason that they didn't make me the leader was because of my age and because of experience so and all. Uh, that, don't worry, that was just for <laughs> just respect. Okay, so I'll be 29 in November. Okay. So, yeah. and um, they, they had a lot of issues, they said all sorts, but some people were even saying I had to go and bribe someone. I was like, Come on, why do I, why am I, I'm not even, this is not something I'm pursuing and, and uh, like that. But once you get in with the mandate of God and the light of God, the Bible says gross darkness will cover the face of the earth. It's not just politics that gross darkness will cover. Mm -hmm. Every area, every area, media, um, entertainment, sports, gross darkness. I, I, was, I was sad yesterday when I was reading the news about the female basketball team having to withdraw from the world championship because the federal government said they should withdraw from uh, from it. And all of these things, that darkness, gross darkness covers the face of the deep across board. So it's not just politics. Everywhere, there's darkness all over. So if you, everyone now sits and says, oh, because there's darkness there, I don't want to go in. And God is saying, there's light on your head already. He says you should be the salt. You should be um, you, should, you should be the light of the world. You, light only shines where there is darkness, and salt only works where it is bitter. So if you don't go to those places, how would you now make those places clean? How do you make those places fresh? Um, today, the, the election that is coming up um, in 2023, we have, all so, we have all sorts of options. And people are, young people are jamming to a particular quarter because they feel like, oh, we have an option now. We, this person can show light, this person can do this, this person can do that. But imagine if those people too stayed at the back end and said, oh, politics is dirty, we're not going to get into it. We won't have uh, any form of hope for, the, uh, for generations to come. And everything that we do in life, in, not just in politics, it's, it's transgenerational. It's very, very transgenerational because I know that my children would come and reap whatever I sow. I know that my, my sister's children will come and reap all of those things. So there's no point um, adding to the decay and the rust that is already in the system. It's just for you to try and get in, get in early and make things work um, well to the best of your ability and how God helps you on time. So what's your mission? Like, what do you want to achieve? What do I want to achieve in life or... By being in politics. By being in politics. Yeah. I say it already. It's just to fulfill um, the mandate that God called um, me to. Um, first, I'm 
if you cut my blood, or cut my skin, it's RCCG first. It's yeah. kingdom, kingdom, beyond RCCG actually, because a lot of people are watching this. It's kingdom first. Let me not say RCCG. RCCG is my home. home church, yeah. But first, it's kingdom. It's all about kingdom. Um, I, I do a lot of things. I'm into media, I'm into arts and entertainment, I'm into uh, maybe a little bit of finance and all. Mm -hmm. And everything I do is the flag of the kingdom. I'm always raising there to show people that um, kingdom-minded people can come into these spaces and still excel. So it's not for me to do everything to become jack of all trades, no. One of my bosses said, Yola, you have to become the sacrificial lamb for so many of um, people that will come after you. I said, oh, it's fine, no problem, we would. What, what does that mean? So I have to be like the foreigner to go and so check. So see what's possible. Yes, yeah, to see that, okay, we can actually get these things done. Yeah. You can actually be a... Uh, uh, you can actually be a young person and still be an area pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God and still be in politics and still manage media for RCCG and you can still do your business, you can still study alongside and do every other thing that's... Oh, how are you able to do all these things? Well, the uh, Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, that's, that's the basic thing first. Um, and um, like I said, everything I do is for the kingdom. So um, I've put everything in God's hands and God helps me to prioritize what I'm, going to, what I'm supposed to do part time. So I cannot miss any legal service. I can't because I have an agreement with God that <laughs> at every legal service I have to be at the redemption camp. They even do my campaign. I came, to, I came to the redemption camp with my weak body and everything to function my department properly. Thanksgiving Sunday, I would have to drive as an escort driver with Daddy Joe down to Ibutemeta every Thanksgiving Sunday, first Sunday of the, um, of the month. I have to perform that duty and make sure as I'm minding God's business, God is minding my business as well. So, and most times, the resources you get, everything that we, we do, all of the popularity or the influence is still channeled back to the kingdom. So God keeps blessing. God, it keeps replenishing, it keeps blessing you, it keeps um, providing every time because he knows that whatever I'm providing uh, for you, you, this, you are still going to use it for the kingdom. So it's just like I'm funding myself. Um, Psalm 89 tells us that um, all of my springs are inside of the, and uh, when we were young in geography, we learned that of all water bodies, the spring is the cleanest. Uh, we have river, we have estuary, ocean, lagoon, but the spring that comes out from the mountain is the cleanest. And if God is saying all my springs are inside of thee, that means everything that makes me God is inside of you already. You that you are doing my bidding, you that are doing what I um, want to do. So as the spring is flowing through you, you are also getting clean as well. That means you are being provided for, you are being replenished, you are being kept fresh. Anytime you are hungry, God provides for you. When um, you are on a lonely road, God um, comes through for you. When you when you are sick, God still comes through for you. When you are weak, God still comes through. So business, God takes care of it. It's hard. It's hard. I can't even lie. I won't, I won't tell you that angels come down and come and start typing. Maybe if I have to build a website, come and start typing the code. You know, sometimes you come back from maybe a meeting and you still have to stay up all night making sure what website is standing, making sure um, somebody is not sending um, scam messages to or bots to the RCCG website, or checking Pastor Yadeboye's messages, making sure that you are praying for people replying at all of it's a whole lot. But God keeps um, strengthening us. And you'd have to prepare for sermon on Sunday as well. Because you're a pastor as well, and you preach every Sunday. Yeah, uh, no, I've so the way we do it now in our parish is because I'm an area pastor, okay. so I have other parishes under me as well. So it's not even if it was just my parish, that have been easy. So I have to oversee other parishes, about seven parishes, mm. um, in in Lagos. Then um, we have three outside Nigeria. We have one in Winnipeg, one in Poland, and. Wow. Um, 
the do other you go one. To those places? Like, do you have to travel to those places? No, no. <laughs> they give, but sometimes it may, you may. So, so what happens is when um, we have an engagement outside the country, we we just combine everything together. We have the LSC meeting, PSF meeting, media meeting, all of that. So um, last month I was in Dubai. We had an engagement in Dubai that we had to... No, we were, at, we were in Europe. Um, we, were in, um, we were in Amsterdam. Yes, so we came down to Dubai to wrap up with some things. So all of the meetings that we wanted to have with the youth pastors and other kingdom-minded meetings, we just had to collapse everything to that period and just compress it like that. So that's what we do most times. You go to the US, everything you want to do, you push it there. You go to the UK, everybody comes around, you'll have your meetings there. Okay. And so for you, like, obviously with all these things that you are doing, we spoke about um, the springs and it's very important that you refuel, that you refuel yourself and you, you are close to the source because at the end of the day, God is the one that is fueling you and enabling you to be able to do all these things that you are doing, right? So, how do you refuel? How do you recharge? How do you renew yourself on a daily basis? Well, um, for us as believers, um, there's no there's no amount of rest that you want to give yourself that is enough. Um, the only rest that you can give yourself is um, resting in God, putting your rest in God, making sure that your rest is in Christ. Um, because people will tell you that, oh, you need eight hours of sleep. You listen to other motivational speakers, you, when you are going through Instagram, someone will tell you that you cannot sleep five hours a day. Somebody is waking up. Your life is, other motivational speaker will come, sleep 12 hours. If you achieve one and all of these the things. The longer you sleep, the longer you live. Like, fam. And um, something, something struck me one day. There was one convention we had. And all of us left the arena very tired around 3 a.m. It was, that convention was very hectic. We left the auditorium 3 a.m. And I could not sleep because of my office. We had to do some other things, so I could not sleep. So as at 6 a.m., I had to run some errands still within the redemption camp. And at that 6 a.m., I saw the convoy of Momijio coming into camp. Now, all of us left the office at 3 a.m. to go home. Some of us went to our, our other offices. But this is someone that left with us at 3 a.m., then was coming into the redemption camp at 6 a.m., which means that she didn't go home. Or probably she went home and she left. Probably she had something else to go and do outside camp as she was coming in around 6 a.m. This is someone in her 70s. And these people are still waxing strong. And you look at yourself, you're like, how old are you with all the strength and with all the time, with all the resources? So most times it's not about the time that you have to sleep or it's about you, you giving your rest to God. Like, okay, God, my rest is in you. And there are sometimes, there are sometimes God actually forces you to sleep. There are times like, so, um, like we, we just go on, they just tell you to go on very long trips, to go to somewhere like Papua New Guinea, and you are forced to sleep because you're on a flight for like 13 hours, 12 hours, and the plane is boring. If you like watch all the movies, there's no way you will sleep. And there are also times where traffic will just hook you. And God will just help you, you are not driving that day. You just sleep will just come. Different different ways. Okay, and there are sometimes you are you probably go to some shows, some programs. Yeah. No matter how interested they are, you just find it. <laughs> and even at the, you just those of there. <laughs> uh, but God is always finding ways of making sure um, we we rest. Rest. And there are some times that Holy Spirit is telling you, rest, rest, you're overworking your body and mm. And you just realize you just have one headache like that. I'm not saying the Holy Spirit gives yeah, headache, but it, all of these things depends on your um, level of maturity with God and all of everything. And you just sleep for three hours, four hours. And you're like, oh, okay, I feel better. Yeah, ah, what, yeah. what happened? And it's just the Holy Spirit trying to force you to, um, trying to force you to rest. But um, I, won't, I won't tell. I won't say overwork yourself. I won't say do overwork yourself. It's different for 
different people. Everyone but, has different relationship um, standards with, with God. Yeah. Talking about relationship with God, how do you make sure that... Because I feel like... I feel like sometimes in the church, we are being driven to like, oh, do this, do this, like pursue your dreams, do this, do this. I mean, using you as a positive example, like go, you are running for office. I read on Instagram that you were saying that you were not in the best state health-wise, you know, but you still pushed through. You did, you ran for office, you know, and um, you are a pastor. You are doing, are you married? No. no not yet. You will be married very soon. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, but you have all these things going on. How do you not allow all these things affect your relationship with God? Okay. Um, number one, for me, it's... Um, God, God says he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. It's the, one of, the, only thing that, the only thing that can cut you off from God when God is lifting you up is pride. And you have to be humble enough to know that God can wipe you off the earth at any time. That's number one. Number two, you have to know that everything that you have achieved, there's nothing that you have not, that, it's, that you'd want to achieve, that you have achieved and you are going to achieve, that was not given by God. If we come to that understanding, now the mistake many people make is, oh, but unbelievers are making it. Um, people are, unbelievers are doing well, so why do I need a relationship with God? But the, 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 the error that we make is, after here, where do I go? When I leave earth, when I leave this terrestrial ball, what next? What's available next? For me, and it's your relationship with him now that would um, translate into the kind of uh, experience that your soul is going to have when you leave this earth, when you breathe your last breath. That is that is the major him. So your relationship now, you um, you don't want to sin, and we live in a world where every day, like <laughs> things things you just you open Instagram like this. Like, there are some pages, some people will say, ah, why are you following that page? I'm a media person. There's no way I'll follow some pages. And you just see one naked uh, woman. You need, ah, oh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God help me. And it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so funny, but like the Bible says, you guard your heart with all, with all diligence. And because we always remember that after here, you are going somewhere. But practically speaking, are there things that you do, like maybe call them rituals or... <laughs> no, no, ritual is... I'm not talking about... Yeah, I get, like, I get. <laughs> no, I mean like, are there routines yeah. or things that mm. you do on a daily basis? Let's say, for example, you spend time, so time praying just on your own every day just to keep that relationship with God going or you can say... I mean, whatever it is for you. Okay, there are some, there are some things that are trade secrets. That if I say it, like we you say, it might look like ritual. Yeah. It, exactly. So because so nah, yes. nah. The thing is, um, if all of us. Okay, let me just tell you the basic. Okay, yeah. Tell, I do. Tell us the basics. Open heavens. That's like my major, major, okay, major so you guide. Have a devotional. Yes, devotional. That is major one for me. Then uh, most times I don't have time to read so many chapters of the Bible as I want to. Um, so I use the dramatized version of the audio Bible. Um, when when you are listening to books of like Psalm, and maybe David is talking, he's saying, "Oh, blessed be to my God, who teaches my hand to war." You would literally hear um, sounds of shields, swords. If you are listening to like Psalm ninety-one, you hear, or no, not like Psalm twenty-three, where it says, "He dead me beside still waters." You hear the sound of water. And it's, it really comes alive for you. So. It makes sense when I'm in the car, when I'm driving, going somewhere far or short as the case may be, you put it on and it makes a whole lot of sense. Um, so, dramatized version, um, Bible, um, devotional, then prayer walk. Everyone, everybody that stays on redemption camp knows what prayer walk is. Before I started living on redemption camp, it didn't make sense to me. I was like, why would you be walking and you say you are praying? Yes, you um, oh, because nice. I'm not. It depends if I'm around, if I'm on camp and uh, I have the strength 
yes, I I I do it because it helps as well. Probably I've eaten a lot of. How do you keep your, your communication with God going? Yes. Do you sometimes say like, okay, I'm shutting out this thing and I'm going to separate myself for a season, or I do it every day at a certain time? Well, people like us, you can't separate. You can't even go and leave. That's number one. So most times it's um, in places of study of the word. Um, when then I like being alone. Maybe that when I marry, that would change. <laughs> I I like being alone. I I I have friends, I have people around, but many times I'm just like, okay, I want to walk alone. There are times where I'm walking at home alone, and I'm just um, I'm just playing music that would just saturate the atmosphere with the presence of God. I can just play it your fellow Sunday for two hours and I'm walking. I can um, decide to play um, chants from Apostle Arume Osai for one hour and there, like, <laughs> it's just like God is just downloading things um, to you and you are just getting new insights then most especially when you are doing prayer work my god that one is it's crazy because most times I leave my f I don't hold my phone I'm doing prayer work so it's just you and God you and God it's so amazing because at that time of the day most times prayer work between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. it's for people that are really Bible scholars you'd understand that that's actually the beginning of the day so that's when you have the morning dew, that's when you, the, the presence is actually real because when God is touching, talking to you at that point, when you are doing those, those prayer walks and all of those things, if, once you hear God, you would feel goosebumps all over your body and the, nothing is limiting you, there's nothing holding you, like maybe your bed or anything. You are just walking and if you are going to even sing songs of thanksgiving, nobody is saying shut up your mouth because it's on the road, you're on a lonely road, and you are encouraged because probably you see another person just doing, just walking and just thanking God. Another person is just walking and crying. Then probably you just see that the Jew with his walking stick, just those days he used to have his dogs that walk around him when he's doing his own prayer walk. And you just, then sometimes you just see maybe one, um, one music star or somebody will be a redemption card, the person is praying, so you're like, ah. See, and you'll be like, oh, well, if this person they pray, ah, ah, me too, I can. And you are encouraged by the fellowship of brethren. And it, sometimes you just walk into people just um, praying, like they're just for me. People that they don't, they don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. And they just pray and they are saying, okay, what's your prayer request? What's your prayer request? Let's have a prayer of agreement. And like, there's no. It's. When you're doing prayer work, it just gives you this freedom. Like, How important would you say it is? Obviously, you got the mandate from God from the beginning, and now you're actually living out the mandate, doing what you feel that God led you to do, God asked you to do. How important is it to work with God in that process? Not just for you to start and get there, but now that you are there, to actually make a difference in politics and in your own local government. Okay, like, um, the first thing is, I'm running with the mandate from heaven running with a, um, with a divine assignment. So, and every day I step into the legislative house, every day I step into a meeting, a political gathering, it's I always have that mandate at the back of my mind. That sometimes you might be distracted. There, there are a lot of distractions. I can't even lie, I'm a, I'm a young guy. I have blood running through my veins and flesh. Like, there are a lot of distractions, there are a lot of temptations. But the only thing that puts you back at factory settings is remembering who sent you and remembering why you were sent. Um, there, there are other things that, like I said, I do aside from um, the whole political thing. But I realized that for me, everything is connected. Everything. Sometimes um, it's, it looks like a Venn diagram where there's like an intersection. And sometimes everything goes like a part. So recently, um, I got I got an invitation to play lead role in a movie with Mount Zion. And you know Mount Zion. Everybody knows Mount like Zion. The people that do Mount Zion. 
Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. I want to interview them, so oh, please okay. help me. No, no problem. So um, Hi, <laughs> I'm coming for you. Thank you. Um, so, and uh, when the movie comes out, it's, it's going to be. Did you already uh, act? The movie? Yes. Wow. Yes. And there, people are like. Are you also an actor? Do you act too? I said yes. I act too. <laughs> from now. <laughs> And so people were like, this guy has not even gone through any drama ministry because Monza, you have to do, you have to be a drama minister, evangelist, and all and all and all like that. And I remember that my, my family was saying, this guy has the call of God upon his life. Mm. What you guys are saying is not what we um, are saying and and all of that. So, and what you guys are saying is not what we are saying and all of those amazing. Um, Things. So at every point, every point, and the sweet thing is, while I was even on set, in because the set was in Ife, I would have to always come back to camp, like almost every two days, to attend political meetings, mm -hmm. to perform my because my what I do on the redemption or for RCCG is that I'm, I'm a staff, my volu volunteer staff. Okay. So I don't know how to explain it. But I'm a staff. I'm paid by God. Let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So I have to, I have to report in the office on camp. Um, I have to make sure some things are still going um, well. And God keeps reminding you that all of these things that are doing is for the sake of one singular thing: kingdom, kingdom. So beyond the fact that we want to build an auditorium, we want to uh, have um, Christians in politics. Everything is so that kingdom, that, ki that kingdom will come. A kingdom will come and God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the sole aim. And the moment you carry that one at the back of your mind, see, there's nothing, there's nothing that you'd want to do that you won't be able to succeed in. There's absolutely nothing. And God would so place um, you in, in a pedestal that you, you would know that the next time you are looking at where you were, you know that there is an obvious improvement because God can never fail, God's standards can never drop, and God can never die. So if all of those things are attributed to God, and if the Bible then says that ye are royal priesthood, you are joint heirs with Christ, that means if God can never fail, that means I can't fail. If God will not die, that means I cannot die. If God will not drop standards, that means I cannot drop standards as well, regardless of the fact that I'm human. So once you have that at the back of your mind, that it is kingdom, Everything you are doing is kingdom, is kingdom. Definitely, you'll be put on a very good pedestal to achieve um, everything that you want to achieve. So, how did you, how did you meet, how did you meet God? How did I meet God? Yeah, or how did God meet you? Okay, I think it's God that met me. <laughs> I was born, I was born in the Christian home, so just like every other normal, average Nigerian child born in Christian home, strict Christian parents, normal. You go to school, um, you'll be a good boy at home, a very naughty child in school. Um, you must carry first, they carry first their own time, which was calm. But we thank we tell God for life. Um, then I remember that time, I had this thing in my head. Um, I, used to, I used to check my parents' NYC pictures and all that. I used to tell my dad that I want to wear this picture. I want to wear this uniform for the future. <laughs> I can't forget what my father told me, and I carried that lie for so long. Once, when I got to secondary school, my father told me that ah, it's only people that always carry first <laughs> that can wear this uniform in life. Ah, <laughs> that that thing. Uh, as funny, it's funny now. But then, when I was really young, when I was my uh, when I was leaving primary school, I can remember very well that thing messed with my brain because I was like, ah, I have to carry first. I, 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 I can't. I, mean, I was not carrying first. I was just there, average student. So I've always known about God. You know my book of Bible story. Um, you have to, uh, they used to have fellowship in our house. Um, sometimes you even teach us fellowship. I was in a choir, played drums, played a little bit of the keyboard, and that basic. And remember, there was one time um, when I was in secondary school, um, we had a carnival in our street, and they asked me what I wanted to be in future. I cannot forget that day. I said I wanted to become a pastor. Like it was after I said it that I knew that. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> and of all things, I said I wanted to be in the world. I said people, everybody were laughing. And apparently, my mom was um, those those years. I don't know if you guys know, but um, I don't know if you um, know what carnival is in Lagos. Yeah. Those days when carnival was still carnival in Lagos, so they would have Which children. Area Fadi. Fadi, okay. Fadi, that's after Pan Group to watch Jibo. Okay. And that time our carnival is always in two ways. So you have the children uh, party in the afternoon, then in the night the youths and the area boys and all of those um, other people would come up. And I just said, Pastor. And since then, my mommy carried it on her head. She got past it. So when I got into university, I went to, I attended uh, Babcock, Andre level, good boy. Like I entered, you know, when at that time, ah, uh, I was first class, this first class was. You graduated with the first class? How? <laughs> <laughs> I said, this first class, ah, uh, no, we must, we must make it. So Andre level, I was on first class. I was, I was Same. good. Same, me too. I was, I was on point. 200 level, I changed hostel. It's one of the no most notorious hostels then in our school. And that was where everything just started. Then there are some things I can't even see on camera, but we thank God. Yeah. So, um, 400 level second semester, we used to have a week of spiritual emphasis in the school. And um, that day, there was a Champions League match. I'm a national fan. I've taken a lot of heartbreak. Yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> but that time, we were still hot in Champions League. And, the service was meant to end by 7.45. Champions League was supposed to start 7.45. And everybody, like all the guys were in the stadium, private school now, you know, the way the worship is compulsory and all. So we shall went to the stadium and we stayed. At 7.50, they have not finished doing... So that's how some guys just pushed the school um, stadium gates. They pushed it and wow. the thing opened, so guys started running and all of that. Um, the school security van started pushing some guys. So we were outside, we too, we just ran out. Hey, hey, hey. And some guys started throwing stones at the, um, at the patrol vehicle. So me, I ran towards the 100 level hostel. I still knew some of those, our potters there now, like, ah, papa, guys. So I just, I ran there, like, okay, so that when they finish, I stayed, I'll just quickly come out and go to my hostel, so we'll go and watch match. Mommy. As I got there, I greeted the man, the porter. The guy knows me, oh, chilly, like, the security vehicle just came to the front of the hostel. I said, where are you people coming from? He said, eh, we are chilling here. Um, the guy, now, the security guy now asked the papa guy, he said, have they been here since? He said, no, that was, I said, ah, that day. I said, ah. So me and my guys, so they, don't, they bonded us inside the vehicle and we got to the security unit. Now, even though private school security unit, it's always like police set up. Like they arrest you, like. So that's just bought our school handbook. They read all our offense stories. They said, um, disruption of school property, um, um, absenteeism from worship, blah, blah, blah. That means you are a cultist, wow. you are this. You had, I, I said, what you be carrying? What you be true? <laughs> Bro, you see that we just we still thought it was a joke. Like okay. before, you know what was happening? They locked us into inside something that looked like a guard room, and that thing is very transparent. Like people from outside would see you. Mm -hmm. So me, at the hour, I was that in school. I was fresh. I had afro, fresh. I do have beards, but I, ah, all those beards. Like everybody was like, hey, hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know private school, private school girls do that. Fresh, and, ah, like, ah, Jesus, God. And they asked us to go and make our ID card. That's when it dawned on me that it was at this moment I know, see, I don't mess up. So I called my mom. I said, Mommy, this is what the situation is. Oh. She said, We can't even tell that your daddy. And all my mind was, Okay, if they are telling my go home for expulsion, okay. I would just lie that yes. maybe or I don't remember that in our estates where we live, most of you put there, they attend private schools too. So, so if they see you at, at home, home, if they see you at home, the person that is going to Covenant, the person that is going to Redeemer, at the back of you, ah, hey, you want one lay, you want. <laughs> I called my mommy. Like it was just God just wanted to arrest me at that point. And my mommy said, Okay, do you still believe that prayer works? Because she said she has given up on my life. I said, Prayer, eh, see, anything. And she said, Okay, do you still have your Bible? Now, 
Bible in the back of them. You bring Bible to school because it's compulsory. So I shall went to get my box. I shall went to I shall ah, okay, Bible should be by. This this was after they collected our ID cards. Automatically you are going on like expulsion. This thing I'm telling you is funny now. Mm. But then it was not funny. Yeah. And so I started praying. Started, prayer started making sense to me again. And she said, um, so in private schools, no, in Babcock, I don't, some other private schools to do before you face the main panel, there is, yeah, there is like an investigative panel or something that you face. The main panel is where you wear gown. Eh? Yes, you wear gown to the panel. Because oh. there's, that, that panel is for Malti. It's for Malti. The person is going on. And she said, Sorry, what, gown? Yes, what you wear convocation know? gown. <laughs> you wear convocation gown, yes. <laughs> So you, you are going home exactly. Like I'm not even, I'm not even kidding you. But it's without the gold cape and all of those things, so you're just black oh and the God. black cap and all. So, but the, before then, there is always one that's like the investigative one. That one is in the secu- with the security department. But apparently, the guy that nabbed us is always the head of that one. Mm. So there's no way. Of there's, the main one. No, of the investigative one. Oh. He's always in the main one too. So the guy that caught us, like the guy that arrested us, he was the one that we were going to meet wow. at the first. And my mommy said, Adi, because Adi they call me. I said, Adi, do you believe prayer can save you from this? I said, see anything. And then I was on. I, see, <laughs> ah, in, in school then I was so, it was not as well as notorious, so, but I was just in this category of guys that party. There was no club I didn't know mm. on the island. We eh? leave all the way from yes. We, so you would leave. We leave Babcock. Then you branch at Redeemers. You now go to Unilag. You go and chill in front of Jaja. Uh, you carry people from Morimi. We we'll come to Tribeca House. We we'll come to Penthouse. We we'll go to like it was, that's how terrible it was. So, um, but then in school, after that thing, I was humble. There was a point there. There was a point they were calling me Ogunwo in school, because I was like I did a lot of business in school then, and then I used to collect money for three meals, because I just pay for off campus and all of that. And I still had money to myself. So on the day of the panel, my mommy called me. She said God said that we vindicated from that panel. You know when all these mothers are talking with faith, I say hey, Amen. I mean I knew that, <laughs> with Mbowale. but the reason why I was carrying that log was so that when I get home, okay. my slaps will not mm. like when she, Daddy wants to Just slap your hands, me, uh, she will be like I feel it. That's what me I was yeah. even yeah. trying to cushion. But my mommy, my mommy, see all these yoga prayers, their faith is strong, and say that that panel, God will vindicate you. I said hey, Amen. I shall go there. The person that was the head of the guy that caught us was not around. They now said, the guy that, that was now conducting now said, Oh, sorry, um, officer, so I can't remember, I don't even remember his name. He said, um, He's not around. He had an emergency in Lagos. I said, Hey, emergency in Lagos. <laughs> ah, okay, one, one first. Now said, Okay, so I can read from here that you people evaded worship. You shall read everything, read everything. The man now said, Okay, but what did you do? You see that what did you do? So you know when when they beat you, they now and you're not crying. They now ask who beat you. They now start crying. You see, that was the question. Me for your level, that <laughs> big boy, <laughs> big boy. Then I, I don't always cause trouble in school or anything, but I was just this guy that people just liked in the hall in our department and all. I just started crying. Yeah. Hey sir, we just left you. He said, okay, okay, don't worry. Just go and don't do it again. Ah, like it shock you. <laughs> go, no worry. Wow. See, till the end of the semester, I was always waiting. Anytime they paste yeah. list for people that they call to panel, I will go and check. Is my name there? Are you a four hundred level? Already? I was a four hundred level, and that was when I knew that uh, God, God just so that it was at this moment. That's when I knew that nah. I can't live my life outside of God. That, but I, I tell you that, see, God, if you get me from this one, it's you I'll be worshipping for the rest of my life. And it seems God just out of honor that agreement yeah. and say, okay, I'll vindicate you from this. And after that, my life just went all the way 
when I then when I was seven, I wanted to run away from Nigeria. That one too. I like I wanted to run away jackpot. I went for that anytime I pass this water coming to the sun, I always get angry. I wanted to jackpot from the country. And I was working in Lagos State then. I was a civil servant. I resigned from the civil service. God asked me to resign. So and it was an agreement with God that okay, God, if this jackpot did not work out, I'll go and work for RCCG. But if it work wow. out, God I say no wala. <laughs> yeah, legal state staff. But There's no what reason. What are you expecting God to do? To let you jack and And now, like, for if I jack back, I'll go, I can walk. I can serve him wherever I am. Okay. That's, so I got to the embassy that day, and I don't. This is a long story, painful story as well. But thank God now. If I walk into the embassy, any embassy, like, oh, you work for the RCCG, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And they denied me the visa. It was a very painful experience. That was my first visa interview on my own, and I was pained. But as God will have it today, like I'm where I am, and God is still taking me yeah. from glory to glory, from realm to realm. There's, there's a lot of stories, a lot of experiences, but we won't leave here if we start mm -hmm. enumerating everything one by one by one. So my work with God has been so experiential. It's not, it's not just by the Bible says, nah, nah. I've, I've seen, I've seen so much of God. Um, in my life, for me to then now say um, I'm serving God by by just what I hear one pastor say. No, it's it's it's, it's so real. experiential. It's it's so real. like I've seen the hand of God in so many areas. When I when I moved to the Redemption Camp at first, I was living in the office, the office I was given for two years. Wow. That was when I first became an assistant pastor. That's when I became a parish pastor. Then. I, um, I got around that apartment on the redemption camp, then I became an area pastor. Today, I'm a landlord. I have my own house. Wow. I have, like, so many things that God just provides on, on a platter of gold, very easy, very easy and um, smooth. And the work with him has been so, so experiential. There are times where it's as if we are vexed with that. God, I found out this thing. God, right? there was one babe that time that dragged me on Instagram, and God, ah, that babe, I forgive her. She like she dragged me with my teeth, as in, because I left her. I, mean, I liked her, but we just had to break the relationship. Or maybe she was vexed that mm. I broke her heart, or she broke my heart, as the case may be. She just came, dragged me on Instagram. Mm. At that time, when Abuja only go service, when I just saw the Instagram post, ah, everybody just Adiola, 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 I'm like, eh? And so like, I was like, God, how far now? How far? Which kind of wala is this? At that time, that was one of the lowest points of my life. Wow. But thank God, we are here. Mm. We're still standing. Still, we're still moving to His glory. Mm.